My answer to that is one that is the most safe and compatible material for your body at this time. Well, you might ask, how do you figure that out? And our answer is we use a blood serum compatibility test. And this is a very simple procedure, very simple test. You have a, a blood draw to a lab or a doctor's office. The material is then sent off to a laboratory that's in Colorado Springs, the one we use. They send us back about 10 days later a very detailed, exhaustive list of the available materials that are most compatible for you. Actually what it does, the test is not just what materials are good for you, what more importantly also or what materials are not good for you so we can use by process of elimination. So when we get that test back, one, one of the things that we're looking for are the bonding agents that are used to place the fillings. All composite fillings need to have a bonding agent so it's not only the filling material that's being used to go back into your tooth but the bonding agent is the first thing that's down onto that raw exposed tooth surface and that has to be compatible for you as well as the filling material that then will be exposed into the fluids of your mouth. So when we have the materials I've mentioned about different substances that we can put into your teeth the most common one is a direct fill composite which is a essentially it's a, a glass particle bound together by a resin. The resin material is interesting material that has uh, it's very soft and malleable and pliable once we put it into the tooth and then we hit it with a uh, an intense visible light it hardens it and it gets as hard as a hard as a rock the composites aren't the only materials that we use for teeth though sometimes the fillings are that we're taking out are so large and the tooth is so compromised we also need to use other kinds of structural re replacements such as a crown or a material a technique called an onlay, which is a, a way that we can encompass the top part, the biting surface of the tooth, which when placed will allow the tooth to take a lot of force and stop it from being able to separate apart. So really some of these material decisions are driven by what is the need of the tooth and what is the job that you're asking of the tooth to be having to do. For instance, if you've got a back tooth that's three quarters or more of a large tooth is a large filling, there's not anything left but a small rim of a enamel surrounding the hole that the filling has to go in. That tooth is very unprotected, so what we have to do and to give you the best longevity with your tooth, we put a, one of these other types of restorations on which will contain the tooth and keep it from being able to split apart and having future fracture of the cusp or even worse, a fracture of the hole through, through the root of the tooth, which necessitates the tooth having to be removed.